Stardew Valley at its most bare is a farming simulator, but to leave it at that would be doing the game a massive disservice. The player assumes the role of a farmer who has started a new life on a plot of land in Pelican Town, located in a region known as Stardew Valley. As the farmer settles into their new life in this remote town, we begin to realize what this town truly has to offer. Planting, watering and harvesting various crops is only the tip of the iceberg. The farmer meets the inhabitants of Pelican Town, or the villagers. They form friendships with them before pursuing a relationship with one of the bachelors or bachelorettes. Or the farmer can decide to date multiple villagers at the same time, whatever floats your boat. Pursuing a relationship with a villager is a relatively straightforward task due to each villager having a set schedule on each day of the year. The farmer discovers a local mine where they can find valuable ores and materials. Be warned, however, the mine contains a plethora of dangerous monsters. Skeletons, slimes, shadow brutes and many other violent entities roam the mine and attack the farmer as soon as they see them. Two of the villagers, Merlin and Gil, ask the farmer to defeat a set number of each type of monster in order to keep Pelican Town safe. It is also in the mine that we meet a character named the Dwarf. The farmer can speak to the Dwarf, purchase supplies from them and form a friendship with them. Near the centre of Pelican Town is the community centre. When the farmer first arrives, the centre is run down, having been abandoned by villagers. With the help of the local wizard, the farmer gains the ability to read a scroll in the centre. This scroll reveals that the farmer is required to bring various items to the centre in order to repair it. But how exactly is the community centre repaired? Well, magical spirits named Junimos have been trapped in the centre. The Junimos can only return home when all of the items have been gathered by the farmer and delivered to the Junimos. In exchange, the Junimos will repair the community centre for the farmer. There are two other locations near Pelican Town that can be visited by the farmer. The first is the Calico Desert. In order to reach this area, the farmer must donate 42,500 gold to the centre. The Junimos will then repair the bus, allowing a villager named Pam to drive the farmer to the desert. In this desert, the farmer can purchase supplies from a villager named Sandy in her shop, or from a merchant in the desert simply called the Desert Trader. The farmer can also visit the Skull Cavern, a mine similar to the mine in Pelican Town. The monsters in the Skull Cavern are considerably more dangerous than those in the Pelican Town mine, however. Mummies, serpents and pepper rexes can all be found here, among other creatures. The second location is Ginger Island. This location is unlocked when all of the items have been delivered to the community centre. As well as this, the farmer must give certain items to a villager named Willy who uses these items to repair his boat and bring the farmer to the island. It is here where the farmer meets the following three characters. The first is Leo, a young child living by himself on the island who can seemingly talk to the parrots there. When the farmer gains Leo's trust and forms a strong friendship with him, Leo will move from Ginger Island to Pelican Town. Next we have Birdie, an old widow who asks the farmer to help her find a locket that belongs to her late husband. The farmer retrieves this locket by talking to the various villagers in Pelican Town and trading items with them until he finally receives the locket from Willie. Finally we have Professor Snail, the owner of the island's field office. The farmer can donate fossils to Professor Snail and assist him in documenting the number of purple flowers and purple starfish on the island. The island also contains a location called the Volcano Dungeon. This area operates in a similar manner to the mine in Pelican Town and the Skull Cavern. But how exactly did the farmer end up in Stardew Valley? Well, the game begins with a cutscene showcasing the farmer-to-be working an office job for a company known as Joja. We see multiple other employees sitting at their desk, typing away and looking bored, if not miserable. As the camera pans to the right, we see the farmer sitting at their desk just like the previous employees. To the right of the farmer, we see a skeleton sitting in a chair. Clearly the manager of this Georgia office didn't think it was important to remove the skeleton from their desk. The farmer opens a letter their grandpa had given to them in the past. The letter reads, If you're reading this, you must be in dire need of a change. The same thing happened to me long ago. I'd lost sight of what mattered most in life real connections with other people and nature. So I dropped everything and moved to the place I truly belong. I've enclosed a deed to that place, my pride and joy, my farm. It is located in Stardew Valley on the southern coast. It is the perfect place to start your new life. This was my most precious gift of all, and now it is yours. I know you will honor the family name. 
Good luck. Love, Grandpa. And that is how the farmer begins their new life. They open a letter from their grandpa and receive the deed to their grandpa's old farm. The farmer then leaves the Joja office, moves to Stardew Valley, and leaves their old life behind. Or do they? The farmer never moved to Stardew Valley. The farmer didn't even leave the Joja office. The skeleton we see in the introduction cutscene is the farmer. They became a slave to their job, never making time for themselves. They lost touch with anything and everything that was important to them, and spent their final moments doing what they had resigned themselves to do forever. Working for the Joja Corporation. While I was describing the premise of the game, I hinted at some particularly odd, even supernatural events that happen in Pelican Town. Each villager has a set schedule on each day of the year. They go to the same location, sit beside the same villagers, look at the same fountain or tree or river. They spend hours on end standing in place, doing nothing. This is quite convenient that the farmer needs to find them, but it also isn't natural. It isn't real. In fact, nobody in Pelican Town truly is. The villagers don't age, regardless of how much time passes. If the farmer wants to marry a villager, they simply talk to the villager each day and give them gifts, followed by a bouquet of flowers to initiate a relationship with them. The farmer then proposes to the villager with a mermaid's pendant. After the farmer has married a villager, they can have children together. Now this is where things get even weirder. Unlike the villagers, the farmer's child will age. However, they will stop growing as soon as they become a toddler. And let's say hypothetically the farmer wakes up one day and decides they no longer want their child. Well, they can visit an object called the Dark Shrine of Selfishness and provide it with an offering. In exchange, the shrine will turn the farmer's children into doves and they will disappear from the farm forever. Next, let's discuss the mine as well as Marlin and Gil. The Pelican Town Mine, Skull Cavern and the Volcano Dungeon all contain various types of monsters in seemingly infinite quantities. Marlin and Gil give the farmer the task of defeating dozens, sometimes hundreds, of these monsters in order to protect Pelican Town. Out of nowhere, the farmer goes from working an office job to protecting an entire town from hordes of dangerous monsters. If you ask me, that's quite the career change. The supernatural aura of the town increases tenfold with the introduction of the Junimos. Not only can the farmer see these magical creatures, but they can also talk to them and aid them in returning to their home planet. When we meet the wizard, he mentions that the farmer is the one whose arrival he has long foreseen. The wizard also says that the Junomos refuse to speak with him. Nobody else in the town mentions anything about the Junomos, so I think it's fair to assume that the wizard is the only person who knows that Junomos exist. This means that the farmer is the only person who the Junomos are willing to speak to. The fate of the Junomos, specifically regarding their ability to go home, rests entirely in the hands of the farmer. I also mentioned that the farmer can visit two other locations in Stardew Valley, Calico Desert and Ginger Island. Ginger Island is somewhat of an escape for the farmer. The parrots on the island construct a home for them, making Ginger Island the only place the farmer can sleep outside of Pelican Town. Calico Desert, however, does not offer the same luxury to the farmer. If the farmer passes out, they wake up in their home in Pelican Town. If the farmer is defeated by a monster in Skull Cavern, they regain consciousness in Pelican Town. I mean look at this, the farmer just blew themselves up with about 30 mega bombs, and not only are they completely fine, but they're also back in Pelican Town. The farmer visits two locations outside of Stardew Valley, but these two locations are featured exclusively in cutscenes. In one of these cutscenes, the farmer visits Zuzu City to watch a football game with a villager named Shane. In the other cutscene, a villager named Sam invites us to watch his band play in the city. Something to note is that time does not pass while the farmer is in these two areas. The farmer uses the bus to get to these locations. Let's say the farmer arrives at the bus stop at 5pm, it will still be 5pm when the farmer returns from the football match or the music show. It's almost like these two events didn't happen. But regardless of whether or not they were figments of the farmer's imagination, the fact still remains that the farmer does not have the choice of staying in either location. They do not have the option to go back to these locations in the future using the bus. The farmer is stuck in Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is the farmer's purgatory. I mentioned that the bus is repaired when the farmer donates 42,500 gold to the Junimos in the community center, allowing them to visit Calico Desert. As well as this, Willie's boat is repaired when all items have been delivered to the Junimos, allowing the farmer to visit Ginger Island. However, 
There is another way to unlock both locations. There is a shop in Pelican Town owned by the Georgia Corporation. If the farmer purchases their membership card, they can then donate 40,000 gold to Georgia in order to have the workers repair the bus. When the farmer has donated a total of 135,000 gold to Georgia, the farmer is then able to assist Willie in repairing his boat. This is the farmer's dilemma. This is the premise of the farmer's purgatory. The farmer has two choices. Option number one, remain loyal to Georgia, the company that the farmer literally gave their life to. Donate over 100,000 gold to Georgia, assist them in basically taking over the town and becoming a slave to them once again. Or, option two, refuse to make the same mistake again. Become a new, stronger person and live the life they didn't have the chance to live before. Meet new people, build friendships and relationships, experience freedom, love and passion for the first time in a very long time. The farmer can finally prove to themselves that they are worth more than being an expendable asset for a company that didn't care about them. By choosing this option, the farmer finally gives themselves the opportunity to accept that they are deserving of another person's friendship. They are deserving of love, of care, of respect. They can not only live the life they so desperately want to live, but they can also succeed while doing so. The farmer can bet on themselves, and in doing so, help improve the lives of the villagers in Pelican Town. Some of the things that the farmer accomplishes by going with this option are Number one, improving Leah's confidence by encouraging her to either sell her art online or by organizing an art show to display her art in Pelican Town. Number two, being there for Shane, a villager who suffers from depression. The farmer shows him that there are people who care about him and will be there for him when he feels like he isn't worthy of anybody's time or attention. And number three, motivating Haley to embrace her more caring and compassionate side. When the farmer first meets Haley, she comes across as being selfish and inconsiderate. However, as the farmer spends more and more time with Haley, she begins to grow and improve as a person. This culminates with Haley raising money to purchase books for the children in Pelican Town. If the farmer looks at purgatory as an opportunity to improve themselves and finally shed their old lifestyle and mindset, then they also end up helping the residents of Pelican Town to improve their own lives. Regardless of whether or not you believe that the farmer is trapped in purgatory, the Stardew Valley is a beautiful depiction of how our actions can affect the people around us. If you take the steps you need to take to improve your life, then the people you care about may be inspired to do the same thing. It's normal for us to feel unimportant. There will be moments when we feel worthless, when we feel like we don't or can't have any value. But it's important to at least give ourselves the opportunity to accept that there are good things in our lives. By embracing these good things and putting in the effort to improve our situation, we can do things we never thought we could do and we can achieve things we didn't think we were capable of achieving. And in doing so, we may inspire the people around us to make positive changes to their own lives.